What's up guys? So it's been about two years since I made my last automotive photography video and um, I kind of wanted to just make a follow-up video. I wanted to show you guys some of the lenses that I'm still using and uh, what lenses I added to my arsenal. Believe it or not, there is not much that has changed. I have only added one new lens and I have changed one that I already had for an autofocus version. So I'm still shooting with the Sony A7 Art and I'm still using the 35 1.4 Zeiss lens. This thing is still the best lens in my opinion. This was like, this is my bread and butter. Let me walk you through some of the recent images that I have been able to capture with my 35 1.4, which is my wallpaper on my computer. This lens is everything. So this image right here is probably my favorite image that I took this year. This was in the desert in Las Vegas, and this was shot with the 35. This lens is just my favorite, favorite all-around lens. It just captures the background perfectly, captures your subject perfectly, and for me, like, this is it. This is the lens that I like to use for everything. So that's just one image, and uh, I also like using this lens for all my rolling shots. Take a look at this rolling shot that I was able to capture with it. I'm always using my 35 for rollers. I know some people prefer to use a 24 millimeter or even, you know, 14, 16 millimeter for rollers. But personally, I prefer to use the 35. I think it's fine, especially if the person is one lane over, you're able to capture the images that, well, that you're trying to capture. This lens also is amazing for interior photos now i'm going to show you an interior shot that i got with the 35 which is this one right here i use my 35 for all my interior shots when i'm trying to get those nice details when i'm trying to get that milky background this is the lens that i use for practically everything um, you can also use a 14 millimeter for interior shots, which I highly, highly recommend. And I'm going to show you guys that in a little bit. The 35 is also really good for a commercial shoot. So let me show you guys this image right here. It is the 4GT that I shot recently. And I love the composition. I love the placement. I love everything about this shot. This is a photo that I captured recently. And this is all natural light. All the photos that I've showed you are all natural light. Um, every photo that I shoot is usually natural light. I don't like to use outside uh, light sources. So I just work with available light. And that was the 35 1.4 that I use for everything. Now, one lens that I'm still using is the 70 to 200 f4. It's still probably one of the sharpest lenses I've used to date. Let's take a look at this image that I recently captured with it. This beautiful Lamborghini wide body uh, Huracan with the Liberty Walk kit. This was shot for Rohana wheels. The sharpness of this lens is unmatched to me personally. I think this is still the sharpest lens to date. And I just love how wide it makes a wide car look and how it accentuates all the curves and all the angles of a car and makes it pop from the background. That has to be my favorite, favorite thing about the 70 to 200. And that's the 70 to 200, everybody. So I am not using this lens as much as I was before because I've actually found a really good replacement for this lens. And that is going to be the 90 millimeter G Master. Now this lens goes down to a 2.8, so your background will get blurrier than with the F4. Again, depending on how far your subject is from your background. But this lens is as sharp, if not sharper than the 70 to 200. And uh, let me show you this recent shoot that I did. So this image right here was shot for Maserati and Pirelli. In Colorado I shot this image with my 90 millimeter now this lens is sharp this lens is sharper than the 70 to 200 if I do say so myself I personally believe that it might be so yeah this photo was taken in motion you can see the snow coming off the tires you can see all the icicles you can see the concentration in the driver's face 
This lens is sharp and I highly, highly recommend it. And with the ability to go down to a 2.8, it makes your subject pop from the background really, really well. Uh, another photo that I took with my 90 millimeter is this photo right here. It's the type of image I would be taking with my 70 to 200, but I've replaced that lens with this lens because I personally think it might be sharper. And I also like the way that uh, this uh, lens flares out the sun. It does a very good job at creating uh, flares. Also, I think the 90 millimeter is really, really good for detail shots. So let's take a look at this uh, shot right here I got of the GTR. For those detail shots of like the tail lights, the badges, you know, carbon spoilers. I think it's a really, really good lens. Keep in mind, this image was taken very late in the day. So uh, my ISO was very high, so it is a little bit grainy. I still, still love the way that this image came out and uh, the moody, you know, tones and colors. So that was the 90 millimeter 2.8 macro G Master lens. The last lens that I have is a replacement of a previous lens that I used before. So I used to have the Rokinon 16 millimeter. Now I have the Samyang Autofocus 14 millimeter 2.8. Some of the issues that I experienced before with not having autofocus was the fact that it would look like everything is in focus, but once you brought the photos over to your computer, it was not in focus anymore. So the autofocus really helps when you're shooting such a wide photo to be able to capture, to make sure that everything is in focus. So let's take a look at this image that I was able to capture with the 14 millimeter, three four by four G wagons. And if you don't know how big they are, they are probably the biggest car you'll ever see in your life. So the ability to capture these three four by four G wagons is only possible thanks to the 14 millimeter. So I showed you guys the 35 interior shot. Let me show you the 14 millimeter interior shot. I think this lens is really good because you're able to capture the entire interior. I mean, take a look at this shot right here. You're able to see both seats, both doors, the entire dashboard, also the environment that the car is in. So this is like really, really wide. This is ultra wide. This lens does have slight distortion around the sides, but it's not really anything that's like much of a drawback so those are some of the lenses that i am using so i'm still shooting with the sony a7r2 i have not upgraded cameras yet personally don't feel the need to upgrade i think eventually i am going to make the jump to the a7r4 or whatever new camera comes out in the last two years a lot has changed and i've also changed my camera bag and i want to show you guys the camera bag i'm using now which is this peak design bag this is the 20 liter and i have to say this is the best bag i've ever owned in my entire life i'm not getting paid to tell you this this is just it i've been using this bag every single day for the last two years as you can tell it is in great condition this bag actually comes with a lifetime warranty and i can do an entire video on just the bag itself but i don't have time for that so if you guys want tell me to make it if not go check it out on their website and there's a lot of other informational videos on this bag but it is able to carry my camera all of these lenses my computer my computer charger and this light that i'm using right here so i highly highly recommend that you guys get this bag in conclusion i just want you guys to understand that these are the lenses that i prefer to use for automotive photography that doesn't mean that these are the lenses you should use for automotive photography these are things that work for me they might not work for you all these lenses have a cpl on them if you don't know what a cpl is maybe i'll make a video on it if not then google it or youtube it there's plenty of videos out there that'll tell you what a cpl is so i just wanted to make this uh video i don't know how uh informational it was but hopefully you guys have a better understanding of what lenses i use to capture what images leave a comment below on what you think i should do for my next video or if you have any uh things you would like for me to answer, let me know. And uh, thank you for watching.